Ask the Lord. I asked her and said, she, Apostle has been doing some teaching, so I should go in the line. So I was lying down, then the Lord gave me a message. And I said, Holy Spirit, give me a sign. Even before the message, give me a sign that you have asked me to preach the message. The message is about the kingdom. And God has called Michelle to Michelle to give her heart to the Lord. Amen. That she may enter the kingdom.
shall be added to you. And I always hear apostles saying, don't worry. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day, it's enough trouble. Hallelujah! The word of God is sweet, isn't it? Very sweet. Sufficient. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Because you know what? You don't know what is going to happen when you leave this room outside there. So why are you worrying about three o'clock? When you have even reached one. Praise the Lord. So no worries. I love my apostle. No worries. I don't worry about anything. <laughs> no worries. Praise the Lord. Don't worry, but seek the kingdom. You know, we all have needs, don't we? We have wants in our lives. And things we worry about and seek. I mean, even though no worry, you are thinking, okay, I'm going to church, I'm going to get a train. It's a worry. What time is the train coming? It's a worry. So we worry. We do worry, but we don't take it to extremes. We pursue education to the highest level to get good jobs and to make money to meet all our needs, don't we? We go to work 35 to 40 hours a week to get enough money to pay the bills, to pay the bills, pay the mortgage, and daily essentials. And we also have some luxury, yeah? Go on holiday and enjoy the cruise. It's all part of life. So we are all chasing after some money one way or the other. Everybody is. Praise the Lord. If you preach us, we need money to live. Yeah. Why? Why do we need it? Listen to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. A feast is made for laughter, mm -hmm. and wine makes merry, yeah. but money answers all. So it means you don't need money. Money answers all. Without money, we won't get this equipment. If there's no money in MCC, we can't sit here, can we? The members of this church will be chasing us for their rent. Money, that's what answers all. So God knows we need money. Amen. And He knows we need to work. And actually, we were made to work. After the fall, God made Adam. Actually, even before the fall, God made Adam work. So work is part of man. Yeah. Hallelujah. And as Genesis 7 12 also says, For wisdom is a defense, and money is what? A defense. But the excellence of knowledge is. Wisdom gives the life. So even though we need money, there's something greater than money, yeah. which is wisdom. Yeah. And we can only get that by seeking the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Jesus told us that the number one thing that we need to do is what? To seek the kingdom. Yeah. We need money. We need to live. We need all our needs to be met. But the first thing, that is not our number one. Our number one is to do what? To seek the kingdom. And he goes on to tell us in Mark 8, 36. He said, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Have you ever asked yourself? Have you ever sat down once to ask yourself about this scripture? Who do you gain the world from? Do you understand what I'm saying? If the Bible says, what will profit if you lose, you gain the world? Who do you gain the world from? Who is the world? Who is in the world? So you see, do you hear what? Can you read that in a different way? Yeah. If you gain the devil, what is going to happen? You lose your soul. And whom do you lose your soul to? Whom do you lose your soul to? So you see, Jesus is saying that if you go looking about everything that the devil is giving you and you take it, you gain everything about the devil, you give your soul also to what? To the devil. Most of the things 
shall we do? If it is not for the grace of God, yeah. we would have lost our souls. Yeah. Yeah. Satan is waiting. Yes, he is. He's after your soul. Yes, he is. So he will fight your faith because he knows without faith you can't please God. As long as he can fight your faith for you to resist God, he got your soul. He doesn't care you having all the millions in the world. As long as you belong to him, it's okay. He's happy. Let's yeah. be the name of the Lord. Amen. First Timothy 6 verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It didn't say money is the root. Like I explained it to you, we need money. But the love of it, I would say the excess love of money is the root of what? Of all evil. And say, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and thirst, pierce themselves through with many souls. They have drifted away from the faith because money has drawn them from the face. Sorry, Michael, I'm giving you trouble, isn't it? I should stand here. I can see it's just you mind that we stand, eh? <laughs> you see, God, listen to this. God does not mind us having money. God doesn't mind you having money. But he's very concerned when money has you. Praise the Lord. God doesn't mind us having money because when I get money, it, it pleases him. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? And then he tells us that I wish above all that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So God doesn't mind us having money. I mean, if we're millionaires in this church, we have bought our house or our building already. And we need, we need to wait for Methodist people to open for us. So we need millionaires in the kingdom, don't we? I want to be one. Who wants to be one? Amen. So God doesn't mind us having money. But he's very concerned. Very concerned. When money has us. Because once money has us, we've lost our soul. And I just, that's a way. I was, I said, God, thank you. Do you know how many times? I don't know, but I know my own. How many times the Lord, in His mercy, has prevented us from gaining the world and losing our soul? I don't know, but I know my own. And maybe I can remind you of some. Do you know when that business you were following for quick money failed? And you lost all the money. Yeah. You know why? God will just help you. Yeah. That you don't gain the world and lose your soul. Yeah. Hey, daddy, thank you very much. He's so merciful and gracious. Because he knew us more than we know ourselves. He knows the thing that will distract you from the kingdom. He knows what the bait, he knows the bait the devil will throw at you and get you out of the way. He knows your weaknesses. Psalm 110 says, He knows that, that we are just as from dust. If that didn't have worked, hmm, some of us won't be in church again. I'm telling you. If that business had worked, if that job you were pursuing that you didn't get and you wondered why, if you got that job, have come to church again. Oh, church, Bible studies, um, uh, what we call prayer meetings, is time. Because you are busy, you have to work till 9 o'clock. You have to go to work from 6 and finish 8. By the time you reach home, it's 10 o'clock. Why are you going to join Bible study? Why are you going to join prayer meeting? So that job was going to kill you. God said, you are getting it. In his mercy, oh, it was mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy and his love. Yes. So you know, sometimes we sit down as children of God and we are wondering, why am I not like everybody? No, you can't be like everybody. Your soul is too precious to God. Yes. Your soul is too precious to God to allow you to be like anybody. Yes. But he still keeps us. He makes sure that you don't go to bed hungry. He 
It makes sure that you don't walk in the road naked. It makes sure that you have a roof over your head. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. Praise the Lord. Why am I saying all these things? He's faithful, he's kind, and he's loving. He wants us to have money. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. He said, and you shall remember the Lord your God who gives you power to make law that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So you see, the wealth that God is trying to give you is to keep the covenant. Bring the tithe into the house. There will be food in the house and he will bless you. But you are seeing that this job that you are going to get, there are some occulted people that will pull you away. That money that you are going to get is going to pull you away. You are going to come out of the covenant. So he needs mercy. He will say, my daughter, my son, not this one. But he has something good in store for you. Praise the Lord. So Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom. Amen. So I'm just going to find out about what is this kingdom? The first time we heard about the kingdom, which is the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven in the New Testament, was by John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 2. The Bible says, John the Baptist started his preaching by saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John was the one who came first because he's the forerunner of Jesus. He's six months older than Jesus. And he knew when Jesus came, John started preaching about the kingdom. Amen? And said, the first key to the kingdom is repentance. Turn away by following those idols and all kinds of things and come to Jesus. And this time around, we need a turning away from everything that is distracting us and come to Jesus. Matthew 6, 13, Jesus also came out teaching and telling us to pray, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom what? Come. The kingdom is here by God, bring it in my life. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And in the end he says, the kingdom is yours. Thine is what? The kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap. Amen. So we're still talking about what is this kingdom. I'm trying to find the kingdom and find out what is this kingdom. And this is also what he was teaching in Matthew 13, 38. So the disciples about the parable of the, the, the tears. Yeah? And he said that the good seeds that was planted are the sons of the kingdom. And then the devil comes in to sow what? Tests. Yeah. And then he said, the disciples who, the, the workers said, shall we go and take the test? I said, no, 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 no. Let them grow together. So even though you give me your life to Jesus and you are a child of God, and as long as you are in this world, you are walking beside us. Yeah. Yeah. You are doing what? Walking beside us. There are things that want to choke you. There are things that want to take the, the little nutrients that you have. Those seeds are also there to share the nutrients with you. But God is not saying, I'm going to take them away. He said, you are going to be in it. When the time comes for me to reap, when the time for the harvest, I will know whether you have been able to stand or not. Hallelujah. So this kingdom business is not a one-day affair. Michelle, today is just the beginning. If the work of faith, testing and trials, he said in this world, you have tribulation, but rejoice. I have overcome. Hallelujah. So you walk with an overcoming attitude, knowing that with Christ, all things are possible. No, anything that is impossible is not in God's dictionary. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. All things are what? Possible. And as long as you walk with him, he's your shepherd. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Said so the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As I'm talking to you, there's no money in your pocket, but he's still your shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The bank account is dry, but he's still your shepherd. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he's your shepherd, you shall not want. You make a way where there's no way. He's a good God. I've tested and I've tried him. He's such a good God. And you know what? Well, sometimes he gives you some deliverance you don't even know you need. I don't have to tell you my testimony now, but God has delivered me. Praise the Lord! Hey! 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 Whenever I remember that story, that case, that situation, I go on my knees and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord! Hmm. It's not everything we say. It's not everything we say in public. It's not everything we say in public. Some of the deliverance, you keep it in your pocket. And thank God in secret. But here you know what he has done for you. Hallelujah. So Jesus said that we are the good seeds that tears have been sown among us. And so he's telling us, you are there. The enemy, the other seeds are sharing your little one, but you cannot turn back. Right. You have to stand in faith. You have to persist. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to continue. You are a soldier. You can't win the battle. Right. So he tells us in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. He said, No one putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Once you make the decision to follow Jesus, there is no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Yes. Times will come that will fall. He said the righteous fall seven times. Then he will rise up again. So when you fall, rise up. This journey, there's no turning back. He said, Who said he's not a sinner? Who, who doesn't make him sin? If you say, I have no sin, you make God a liar. This flesh, what is inside, is sin. Yeah. It's only Christ in us that is helping us to suppress this yeah. sin. If you like, you leave me alone, mm, I don't know what I will be. Yeah. It's only the Christ in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So please, when I fall, help me to get up. Yeah. Don't criticize me. Don't shoot me while I'm already down. Yeah. You know, somebody said, Christians are the only soldiers. Who kill their wounded friends? Yeah. We kill them. Yeah. We bash them with our mouth. Yeah. We criticize them. And they don't even want to know about this. But there's no turning back. Yeah. You may fall because you are in the world and you are not of this world. Right. So everything that the world can do to get you out of Jesus, he will do it. Yes. But I want to tell you, you have to stand. And having done all, stand. Yeah. Hallelujah! You are a child of the kingdom. You are a part of the kingdom. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! There's a song. We are heirs of the Father. We are children of the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. Your laughter is my laughter. Your sorrow is my soul. We are family. We are one. Amen. We are children of the kingdom. Amen. And this kingdom is going somewhere. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. We proud that you are part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. But he says that if you turn back, his soul has no pleasure in you. You can't turn back. You will lose out. It's too dangerous. 
dangerous. Yeah. It's too dangerous to come to Christ and turn back. The devil will grab you and beat you. Yeah, if you become a Christian and don't make it to heaven and you go to hell, you will get 100% 10 times punishment. I'm telling you. So please, 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 whatever the case, whatever the case, whatever the situation, stand as a child of God and as a Christian. Hallelujah. I'm still talking about the kingdom. And said, so no one put his hand to the plow and looking back, it's fit for the kingdom. But then there's something in Galatians that, uh, what do you call it? Paul wrote, I don't know, can you draw a Galatians 20 from 21? Let's see, where's my Bible? Galatians 5. Let's read something small there. Hey, Baba Kurashi, Baba I will start from 19. Okay, I will start from 16. It says, I say that, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you do not do the things you wish, that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are no longer under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, Lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit. The kingdom is for inheritance. And there are certain things that the Bible says that. First it says if we turn away, we are not fit. And then Galatians tells us that if we do the works of the flesh, we will not inherit it. So today I'm just appealing to all of us. Let us press on, let us endeavor to inherit the kingdom. Let us use the word of God to bring this flesh on the subjection. Paul said, bring your body on the what? On the subjection. Let us renew our minds from the old things that we think about and present our body what? A living sacrifice. Present your body what? A living sacrifice. Yes, let me make a mistake. God will forgive you, but don't let us continue making the mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us learn from one another's mistakes. And let us stay away. We cannot continue as usual. Time is too short, brethren. Time is what? Too short. Jesus is coming. The kingdom is at hand. So this is telling us about the people who are already in the kingdom. If you are in need, don't turn away. If you are in need, then let's choose from the works of the flesh. Hallelujah. So this is it. For us who are in the kingdom, we have to use the word of God and make sure what the Bible says in the Ephesians, in Galatians, sorry, Ephesians 4 from verse 11 onward that Jesus when he rose up from the dead, he gave gifts to men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors to do what? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry so that we come like him. We come to what? His image. So Jesus wants us to come to his image. So when we come to church and the preaching is the word of God is given, we need to live by the way. We need to take the word of God seriously and live by it. If you have to change our attitude, change it. It may hurt a little, but you will be for your own profit. Praise the Lord. 
So those who are in the kingdom, we need to walk with Jesus day in and day out. Turn away from our sins. When you make a mistake, confess to the Lord. He will give you grace. Forgive somebody. Forgiveness is the key. Many Christians, we don't know how to forgive. We don't know how to forgive. We have to learn to forgive. So this is for those who are in the kingdom. But those who are not in the kingdom, Jesus tells us, this, this man who was a Sanhedrin and he went to Jesus and said, what can I do to be saved? You are a man, he said. He told Nicodemus, John 3, 5. Nicodemus, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. In order to enter is what Rachel did right now. Be born again. Confess with your heart that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart. Confess and believe that Jesus is Lord. He will come into your life and you become a new creation. Hallelujah. If you are not in the kingdom, come and let Jesus come into your life. If you are also in the kingdom, and we know that in Pesach, that some of the things that you are preaching is hurting me, renew your mind. Change your attitude and say, Lord Jesus, I'm going to start afresh with you. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom, according to Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So what is righteousness? Oh, you know some people think righteousness is wearing the long garment with the covering your hair and your like, No, 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 no. Sanctimonious. If you are sanctimonious, it's righteousness. No. No. Righteousness is actually Christ himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us in my time. <laughs> that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So when you become again, there and then, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus takes away your sin and clothes you with his own righteousness. Hallelujah. And that's why you can boldly say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Philippians 3 9, I say, and be found in him. So when you are the righteousness of God, you have to be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why is this? You know what? God is a righteous God. And he cannot bring us to heaven unless he brings us to his system. Yeah? Do you understand? God cannot bring us to heaven until he brings us to his level. So your level has to be in the level of God, which is in righteousness, before you can come to heaven. And so in his mercy, John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Why? When you believe in Jesus, he moves you to the level of God, to the level of righteousness and eternity becomes yours. Hallelujah. He sent his son who knew no sin to become sin for us. That through him will become the righteousness of God. And that's why he calls us sons of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the firstborn, and we are the brothers and sisters of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't forget this. God cannot take you to heaven until he brings you to his level. You can't go to heaven without coming to the level of God. So, what is the level of God? Go and make a search. That's the assignment for this week. Hallelujah. What is the level of God that I have to come to so I can make heaven? So he said, kingdom is righteousness. That is what we just as, as, 
explain. Righteousness is Christ himself. Righteousness is being in Jesus. And then he said, peace. Righteous, uh, kingdom is what? Peace. Isaiah 9 verse 6. He said, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yes. So who is peace? Peace is Jesus. Amen. So you see, we are trying to define the kingdom. We see that it's righteousness. And righteousness is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We've come to peace. And peace is what? Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say, the, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. It said, and he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those to whom nothing is prepared. For this day is, a holy, is holy to the Lord. Don't sorrow for the joy of the Lord. Is your strength. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So who is the joy? The Lord. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You cannot have this three if you don't have Jesus. Hallelujah. Because all of them is Jesus himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can see, for me, I will read Matthew 633 like this. <laughs> Jesus first and all other things we added to me. Seek Jesus first and all other things will be added to me. Jesus said the kingdom, but if you don't understand the kingdom, as I've explained to you, righteousness, peace, and Holy Ghost is Jesus. So if you are reading uh, Matthew 633, just tell yourself, I will seek Jesus first and everything else in the Lord of So we are not going to live in the world and allow the world to choke us as sons and daughters of God. We are not going to turn away. Yeah, we are not going to turn our back because we will not be fit for the kingdom. We are not going to walk in the works of the flesh. How did that we lose the kingdom? Brethren, this is the word the Lord has for us today. Jesus loves us so much. And he sacrificed on the cross for you and for me. And all he desires for us to say, yes, Lord. I receive your sacrifice that you did on the cross. I will stand up. And I want to walk with you. Maybe I have missed it on the way. Maybe today you have not fully given your life to Jesus. You have not fully. You've been coming to church, you've been coming to church, you've been coming to church. But if Jesus comes tomorrow, if he comes this afternoon, maybe once I'm standing here, the rapture will come. Where are you going to be? Are you going to be in the kingdom or you'll be left behind? Today is decision day. You never know the time or the season. I want to give somebody opportunity today. Maybe you have been coming to church, but you are not sure whether you are born again. It means you are not. Because if you're a man, you know you are a man. If you're a woman, you know, even though they are trying to confuse you, you still know who you are. So if you're actually born again, there's no confusion. You cannot say whether I'm not sure or sure. So if you are not sure, make it sure today. Hallelujah. If you are not sure you are born again, there's opportunity to make yourself sure today. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands. And also, if you are already in the kingdom and you know that you are not really walking the way God wants you to walk, today is the time to repent. And say, Lord Jesus, give me a second chance. I've come for a second chance. Apostle, I just want you to take this time. Just pray for us. Let Apostle pray for us. Some of us, we need the Father's blessing. Amen. We need the Father to just speak into our lives today. There are so many things that we are going through. It's only the Father's love that can bring it out of us. Let's focus on Jesus today. Let's focus on Jesus today. Let's focus on Jesus today. Let's focus on Jesus today.
such a wonderful way to go. Let's put our hands together for him. It's absolutely wonderful way to go. I'll just say before I pray, because we are a very important moment. Every week, someone is giving their lives to Jesus. Last week, the week before, today, Michelle, and more. And this is a wonderful trend. It's a wonderful time. And I'm just going to say something, Pastor Gather, about the word repent. I'm not sure if many of you ever heard me teach on it, but repent comes from, it has a prefix in front of pent, P-E-N-T. So when, when John the Baptist came and said repent, it was something to do with turning our back on the past and sin, but it had more to do with where, where your accommodation is and where you're going. So how many of you have ever seen a penthouse? A penthouse is totally different than the rest of the flats or accommodation in the block. The penthouse is at the top. So what God was saying when John the Baptist came looking like a poor man with camel hair and he says, repent. So it means pent existed before because God was saying re. Adam and Eve had that penthouse experience. And so God was saying, I want to bring you back there. Back into repent, repent, repent. Repent. Everyone say repent. So when you come to Jesus, you're not going into a bad life of suffrage and the destruction and pain, but you're going up into the penthouse, into the penthouse of God, right on the top. He's elevating you from wherever you are, and he's putting you in the top accommodation. Someone give the Lord praise. <laughs> That's why I serve Jesus. Because I'll always be at the top. Because I serve him. Because you will always be at the top. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel the joy. That's why I'm laughing. I feel the joy from it because it's true. It has to be true. My spirit bore witness to what came out of my mouth. Let's give God for Just thinking about Jesus right now. Don't think about anyone. Don't think about who you're next to. Don't think about your phone or social media. Don't think about your rice and chicken that's in the oven. Gonna be warming up in a few minutes time. You've got to get there. Everything's safe. Hallelujah. Just repeat these words with me. My Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today that calls on everyone to repent, to turn their back on sin and the world and the world system. And no longer will we serve that system, but we are now in your system completely which is the kingdom of God. And Lord, I repent, not just in the action of my sins being taken away, but also in the understanding that you are elevating me from the power of darkness and the kingdom of darkness and Satan's kingdom 
and you are taking me now into your glorious kingdom, into the penthouse experience, to a higher level of living. Lord, wash my sins away. And Lord, to those who've given their lives today, I praise you, Lord. Come into the hearts of those who are seeking you, Lord. Touch them now, and may they remain in this church as good seed. They will be good seed that you are sowing into your kingdom. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you now. We give you all the glory. Everybody shout to Jesus right now. Just take your seats and my hand over. Take your seats and your hand to our moderator. Just, just a minute. Uh, our church is moving forward into a greater level of things that God has planned for us. And at this time of the year, uh, our executive board, we go away to work on the plans for the church. And we have some exciting things for you and for the church. Praise the Lord. And I'm very excited about the things that God has told me to introduce. And we're introducing some new things. And it's just really great. Really, really great. And I'm very, very pleased to tell you about this. I, we need some volunteers uh, for certain things. And you can, Michael, you can switch us off now. Thank you. 